What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube man? If you're a YouTube man, hit that comment section. Let me know you're checking in. Let me know you're here. If you're in the chat, put your favorite emo in the chat. This is the Needle Podcast, episode 81, 81 straight weeks chat. Um, appreciate all the support y'all had this week. It was crazy. We had the Madden Bowl. The Madden Bowl ended. The Madden Bowl was... I, I Overall, we can just go ahead and, and give the Madden Bowl a big W. Right, chat? We can't... We cannot discount the Madden Bowl being a W this week. Without a doubt, no, I mean, EA ran it pretty much flawlessly from home. Everybody being home, I feel like it's got to be a W. I feel like it was it was really well done for everything, considered everything that happened uh, with the virus, with everybody being stuck at home. I mean, and you're talking about sending all this equipment to people that don't necessarily know how to use it. You know, and walking them through it, I mean, it really was a big W, and, and everything went good. You know, other than, you know, Clef of Bugs did not win, but you know that's okay, because we've been down before, and and we're going to be back up there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, Joke did win. It was his first belt. It was his first championship after being there so many times. Uh, but, and without further ado, man, like I said, uh, this is, I, I am... Blessed that every belt winner has come on the podcast the Tuesday after they win and talk about the event. Now, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, Joke obviously has a lot of history in the MCS and, and a lot of different things to discuss between the team, between the different matchups. Uh, and, and then ultimately, he thinks that his Madden 20 year was the best MCS year ever. Now, you know, it's my place to disagree, and we will do that later in the show. But first, Without uh, any further ado, let's bring the Man Bowl champion, uh, Rydell Joke Brito, my guy. Yo, what up? What's the word, man? How are you? How you doing? First things first, congratulations. I know it was a lot of work. I know you put in a lot of effort uh, to this Madden thing competitively, and it finally paid off for you. So has it sunk in yet, you know, two or three days later? I don't think it's going to sink in, honestly, until I get the belt, which they just shipped. So, like, until I get it, I don't think so. Like, I've kind of just been, like, it's kind of still, like, crazy that I finally won one. It's like you kind of always go into a tournament thinking you're going to win. But, like, you get me, you never really think you're going to win until you finally win. Mm -hmm. So, it still hasn't really hit me, honestly. Okay, there you go. And my man Silent right there with the five gifted, my guy. So, I mean... It is kind of tough, like, all right, I finally won after being in, you know, 20 live events, you know, so, so many majors your whole life, and this is the one where you got to wait for the belt. So it's kind of like, damn, I won, but damn, I still got to wait a little bit longer. But So so talk about that as, as opposed to, you know, being right there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it still doesn't even, like, I feel like, I, I, I'm going to feel like I finally actually won once, like, the belt comes in. Because, like, mm -hmm. you know, every tournament, obviously, the, like, the you know, the thing everybody wants to do is, like, you know, raise the belt, say you won. Yeah. And then, obviously, after that, you go out, you party with everybody. Like, you know, I wasn't able to do that. Like, my my partying was going upstairs and drinking wine with my brother. I, honestly, Lil' Man was supposed to come to my house wow. and get drunk it. with me. But, Lil', nah, Lil' Man is bucking me. So, Lil' Man, if you're in the chat, you That's still got to come take some crazy. shots with me. Cause, yeah, Lil' Man was supposed to come over and get drunk with me. And you know, I won what Saturday. It's Monday. My guy still hasn't came over, so that's yeah, rough. Little man is bucking me. That's a L. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, listen, if if little man won, you'd be there. First of all, we got it this moment because there was a rumor that you were in little man's closet the whole time he was playing. That was a rumor going on, shouting him to play, is making sure he was right. So I mean, that's just something they said, and, and you know, I don't know if it's true. But talk about preparation between having somebody in your group that's also like in the same spot of the tournament as you. Did you guys work together a lot or a little? How was that? How did that go? So honestly, most of my Lavin, I did. Well, honestly, all of my Lavin I did with Vy, Tony, and Chai's. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, like you know, whatever we found, or like if Little Man was Lavin, we shared like you know whatever we found. And then it was kind of cool because like Little Man played before me, so Little Man, you know, obviously played Clef. So just going into that game, I knew, you know, Clef and Pavin would obviously run the same defense or, you know, Clef and – I mean, I, I thought Clef and Junior would run the same defense. So I kind of got to watch that game and see what Clef was doing against Lomat. So I kind of went into my game with Drini kind of having a good, you know, general concept of what runs was going to work against them. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool that little man played first because I get to see what, you know, what adjustments, if any, Clef is making from the day before. So I got to see that, and I got to see, like, there was a few runs that I was going to do against Trini that wouldn't have worked, that I would have just wasted a few downs on. 
had mm-hmm. I played him first. So like getting you know to see little man play Clef first was good. Yeah, and do you think that's almost? And at the same token, do you feel like Drenny kind of got to look at some of the runs that you might have tried, you know, with Little Man playing before you? Do you think because because that was always something I remember Skimbo was big on this. Like I remember Madden eighteen, we were in the same group, right? And you think we would like practice for the people we had to play, right? But he was like, no, nah, I don't really want to like do the same thing to them because then they'll be ready for it when I plan, you know. So was there any thought to that? To be honest, yeah, like, I, I kind of wanted to try to hide, like, because I knew I was going to run a lot of Winflex close because they had really good defense against, like, two, all the two receiver sets. Mm-hmm. So I kind of knew I was going to run a lot of Winflex close. And, like, at first, you know, I was like, damn, I kind of don't want to show Lil Man. But then, you know, at the end of the day, too, it's like, you know, if Lil Man wins, I'm going to be happy just like if I won. So I was like, you know, I ended up showing him, like, everything, you know, all the runs that I liked. And then, obviously, he, he already felt comfortable going into, you know, the clutch blame on defense because – he was running match and that's actually something i tried to do so after groups i actually i hit up sean trying to switch my playbooks because like i know in the past we've been able to switch our playbooks after uh after groups Mm -hmm. so i did want to switch playbooks because i wanted to you know i wanted to go i wanted to go to green bay to have the defense that little man and Drini ran i mean little man and decroft ran and i actually wasn't able to which is why i had to run nickel normal if i wanted to run match but like i did try to change my playbook because of little man so that's just something I wasn't allowed to do, obviously. So I was like, you know, little man, if little man had found something and I played first, he would have told me. So I did the same. So no more. And that's that is the advantage to uh, having a group so strong that's in, in the same you know the same spot in the tournament as you. Now, I mean, I mean, you brought up the group. I pretty much every time you talk, you talk about you know, like you said, Vy franchise and Tony. Um, I as a side note right here that I just want to ask you, who do you think in your group that is like the next person to really pop up and, and really, you know, either win a belt or make a really long run that hasn't, you know, in the last three or four years? So, for me, I, I would say, like, somebody, like, it'd probably be VY. Because mm-hmm. VY is honestly one of the best Madden minds in the world, and, and he puts the time in. And I think now that he's, you know, obviously a part of EMB where we're going to help him just as much as he helps us, I think it's, it's really going to make him a much better Madden player. So mm-hmm. I would definitely say BY because BY really does know the ins and outs of the game. He knows every single thing that you need to know about Madden. And he he plays just as much as anyone. And when I'm telling you, like, this is like a legit stat. There was so many games where I played uh, where BY was just laughing with me, where my running back was permanently baby blue because I ran the ball so much with him that I couldn't get him to full blue anymore. He was just permanently tired. It was one game where he let me run 88 times against them. So it's definitely one of those guys that you can tell is committed to being good at Madden. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to have like a really big year next year. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. All right, now I want to talk about this team. Because uh, we brought him up maybe two weeks ago on the uh, the show about your team and uh, what kind of went into making it. Because I, like you, as you said it earlier, that – Thought there was no chance that that no quarterback was ever going to win uh, win the, this tournament again, you know. After Volt did it, uh, so talk about first of all, that's the first decision you have to make is I mean, I'm not going with a quarterback. So I honestly, there there was two things that like there was basically I was going to play either I was going to play the game either three ways. Uh, option A was I was going to use Vic with Hot Rod Master and Escape, and I was going to have Gale Sayers, and I was going to kind of try to play like Greeny. Mm-hmm. But I was obviously going to have Vic when doing that. When I tried that, honestly, like, I just wasn't really playing good offense. Anytime I played Frank Clark, he just ruined my life. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, all right, throw this away. This can't work. So then I tried to play, like, you know, how Drini played with Hot Rod Master. And I had a secure protector. And then again, I just wasn't really scoring enough. I was losing more than I was winning. And, you know, like, I wasn't even really getting stops. Because if you spend that much time on offense, like, your defense is usually pretty bad. So then uh, Jaber was telling me how, like, yo, 10-cap quarterback is still good. And I was telling him, like, nah, that shit sucks. Like, there's no way that, you know, like, I remember one night, I, Chai's just kept like, yo, you need to use 10-cap quarterback. I was like, Chai's, stop fucking telling me this. I'm never using a 10-cap quarterback in Madden <laughs> And it got to the point where, like, Chai's was really, like, like, I was ready to kill Chai's. So, like, a few days later, I play, um, I play uh, Jaybird, and Jaybird was using, you know, the two quarterbacks with Nasty Streak. And honestly, like, I, I, it was hard to stop. Like, he was running for consistent yards on me, and I was in 3v5 wide. I had inside stuff. I was like, hold up. Like, this might be the move. Yeah. So he, he sends me his team. I make a few changes to, like, make the team, you know, kind of how I wanted it. So he had Christian Akuye. He had a few players that I didn't like. I changed the team around a little bit. 
So then I start playing Tony, I start playing BY, and, and I'm running on 3 to 5 wide. Like the, the, the traditional spread lineup, I was running for 200 a game on that. So I start running that, and, you know, now here I am, I'm winning every game again. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not giving up points. I played, J- I played J-Wall a lot. I played D-Croft a lot going into the tournament. And J-Wall, in my opinion, is the best offensive player, in, you know, in the game right now. Yeah. And J-Wall wasn't scoring much on me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, this might really be the move. So now I'm kind of thinking like, yo, I think I'm going to lock this in. So it got it got to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm just going to I'm just going to basically play to the extreme. I got to the point where I'm like either I have to pass every single play or run every single play. And obviously I I ran every single play all year. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whatever, like I'm I'm going to go out how I came in like, you know, basically like if I lose with a 10 cap like it is what it is. And then going into the tournament, I felt really comfortable, honestly. Like, if everyone would have just ran the regular 3 to 5 YD where they just shifted the lineup, like, I would have ran for 200 again. But, like, you know, 808 and obviously Drini and them did a good job of, like, adding their own little mix to it and, like, switching. I mean, uh, shooting the gap out of 3 to 5 Y, which made me spend so much time, like, labbing against that. Because mm-hmm. most of the runs that I was used to running, like, didn't work against that at all. All right, and that's a good point. And, and... And that is something that I love, and it made me win my belt, was the time that you have in between games. You know, where you go to the Man Classic, there's no time. So, essentially, what you're telling me is if this was a one-day tournament, or back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back, you you don't run for any yards. Do you feel that way? So, if if it's a one-day tournament, no. If it's, like, a day where I get a, you know, like, a whole day to lab, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because, so, basically, what happened was, I, I win my group, right? And yeah. I honestly didn't start, you know, playing the game until maybe a day before I actually had, no, uh, I think two nights before I actually had to play. And, you know, all we were doing was just trying to find runs. So maybe, like, if it's the same day, I, I definitely have no chance because it, it took a lot of, like, it took a lot of practice and time to even find, you know, decent runs against the defenses they were running. So if it's a one-day tournament, I, there's no chance I win. Mm-hmm. If it's a day-by-day tournament, maybe. Because I got to basically practice against one defense every day because Haven and, uh, you know, uh, Drini both ran different defenses. Mm-hmm. So maybe one day I think I still win. But if it's one, I mean, if it's like every other day, like, you know, we play one game a day, then, yeah, I think I still win. If it's one mm-hmm. day, one day tournament, no chance. Yeah. So that's not, and that's, and that's just how do people utilize their time, you know, in between games is an important aspect. And, and it goes back to the people you have in your camp, and they obviously helped you a lot. Um, well, talk about these nasty streaks because I mean, from the first look, the first game it's because uh, three through five wide that Nickelback lines over top of the tackles. Is that why we went with those or what? Yeah, so like I knew three to five wide obviously was going to be the you know the meta defense that everyone ran. If like if, if somebody ran three four because I had a nasty streak, like I would have spent six hundred cap on it because three four was not good against the run. Mm-hmm. So I knew people were going to run three to five wide. And from playing, you know, Decroft and playing Jay Wall, I, I, I knew that the adjustment people were going to make against the Nancy Street was backing up the slot corner. And it had a bunch of different motions and different run plays that really worked against that. So it was better. Like, I, I had more runs if you backed up the slot corner. So I kind of went with that because I felt like, you know, when, you, when you're running an offense where you can only run the ball, you got to give yourself a chance to, you know, have big plays. And honestly, had I seen somebody, like, had I seen Noah play, I probably would have gone with human joystick instead and kind of just use the same exact team. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, honestly, I couldn't figure out a good way to use a human joystick and still have like Frank Clark with power specialist and have all the DBs. So that's why I went with Nasty Street because it was less cap. <clears throat> and it still let me you know have all the, everything I needed on defense, which was like, you know, the best players at every position with Frank Clark, you know, with the power specialist. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the backup running back, I feel like I don't know why people don't have backup running backs. You know, I think that's always a good move just to give yourself somewhere else to go with the ball, right? I mean, that's no-brainer to me if you're a runner. Yeah, I agree. I, that's the one thing I didn't like about Noah's team and, you know, both, they both had a, a low-cap Jusek. And then the, the big reason was, like, you know, Franco Harris really didn't play that big of a, you know, that part of the tournament. And honestly, it's because a lot of people played really good defense, but – the games where I ran for a lot of yards, uh, I, I was audible in a lot and doing a lot of motions and flipping and utilizing, you know, Tressway being able to hand off the ball to, with his left hand. So I had to go with, you know, somebody like sometimes it was going to be Gail. I gave him the ball three times. I was going to have to bring in Franco Harris because I didn't want to just cycle my formations 20 seconds of play because I'm wasting mm-hmm. too much time when I'm doing that. 
So I thought it was just a better strategy to have a backup running back and just run the ball two or three times with Gale, cycle as little bit as possible. And then, I, so basically th my strategy was as soon as Gale got baby blue, I would, uh, no, as soon as he got yellow, I would get him to baby blue. I would run one play with Franco Harris and that would give me three more plays with Gale. So it mm -hmm. would save me a, a lot of time throughout a game, especially like when I don't got a cycle for three straight plays for 20 seconds, that saves me a minute. And when you're running the ball every single play, like every second counts, which is why I decided to go with like a backup running back. All right, here's a question. I don't know. All right, so you know, obviously, they, they regain energy when you're in the huddle, right? They regain energy if you scroll through the plays. Now, say you call your play with 30 seconds on the play clock, but you don't hike it till one second on the clock. Do you think there's any way they regain stamina while they're sitting there waiting for the ball to be snapped? Or do you think they'll stay on yellow? I guess there's no uh, way to really tell. I, I, I know for sure they stay on yellow because there, there was times where if I left Gale in the game as a fullback, uh -huh. he wouldn't come back to full blue, even though he wasn't getting the ball. Okay. So, like, you you'd ha you basically had to take him off the game completely. So that's when I, I would put in Atkins at fullback, and then I would just hand the ball off to Franco. There you go. Okay, okay. Now let's talk about the defense. So when you have this lineup, uh, you pretty much have your pick of defensive players. Do you feel that way? Uh, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Like, I could have fit basically any. Like, I, honestly, out of the 11 players that I had on my defense, there's really only one that I was kind of iffy about. And it was clowning. So I basically, yeah, like I got, I got to handpick every single player that was on my defense. Now, talk. I've seen a lot of people with the Ed Reed talk about going with Taylor May. See, I'm a Taylor Mays guy. I, I mean, I, I just, I like big bodies. I don't. I think the the point of speed or whatever. I don't. I think Taylor Mays is still the best player in the game. So yeah, I agree. Another thing too is so Ed Reed was ten more cap for for two speed. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, like one speed is worth three to four cap. So if he was, you know, 76 cap, or I mean 78 cap, mm -hmm. I would have used him. But I, I just didn't think Ed Reed was 10 cap better than Taylor Mays or Justin Reed. Because, like, you know, he's just two speed faster. And I, I just didn't think, like, the value was there. I, I know a lot of people went with him, but I thought, I, I've always thought this, Taylor Mays is the best, you know, salary cap player in the game. Yeah. And he just makes so many plays with the computer that I just felt like there's no point of spending 10 more cap for a player who's not better, but he's faster. No, I agree. Sure. And you still got the Dion, who I think is the best budget, and Lattimore. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I, I'm surprised more people didn't have Dion. I, I, I think, you know, was he 61 cap or 65 or something like that? He's just like super cheap for 90. And he's just, I, I think Dion's been glitched in Madden since he's been in Madden. I don't know. No, I agree. Deion's a baller. He just yeah. plays, like, out of this world. Yeah, I just think his, he gets animations more than any other person, and I, I think he's a stud, you know. I'm like, okay. Another thing, too, is he can spin, so you can use him as a special teams player, and you don't have to, you know, use an offensive player and waste stamina. For sure. And we saw Frank Clark uh, dominating. Uh, and this is how I feel about Frank Clark. I, I feel like this game... I, I don't care if his name, I don't care who it was. If he has that power specialist and that type of speed, he's going to kill. I mean, that's pretty much how I feel about the game. And I feel like Fletcher Cox, the difference between him and Fletcher Cox is he's, what, 90 speed or whatever? He's just getting right to the quarterback after he sheds. I, I agree. I've always said the same thing. I feel like any players who have the, you know, if they have the same ability, they're going to play the same. But the difference was just that, you know, like Frank Clark was the cheapest 90 speed power specialist. And in my opinion, like 90 speed is like a threshold where it's harder uh, uh, it's harder to outrun 90 speed than 89 speed. And I, I kind of realized that once I started using the, the 90 cap ends. And that's why, in my opinion, a lot of people use the Daniel Hunter and the Simeon Rice because once they shed, it's a lot harder to outrun 90 speed. And, you know, Frank Clark, like most of the times where he shedded, if you were sitting in the pocket, unless you were already rolling out, most of the times you got sacked. So like that was just huge, and I, honestly, I'm I'm shocked that more people didn't use Frank Clark because I was just seeing him play. It was like the the plays he would make, the the things he did on defense, just made it so hard for anyone to play offense against him. Yeah, for sure. But that goes back to people that you know spend. You look at Kiv's team, like he he had so many abilities. All his receivers had three, four abilities, and then he had the four abilities on the quarterback. So how do you like you know? Go ahead and fit that type of player in there. So it's just all about roster construction and what you do and being able to run and, and not have that quarterback really helps put that type of defense out there on the field. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the team looked good. I mean, I, I, I don't I, I don't know why you question the clowning man. I think he's glitched in Madden. But, that, that's honestly so. I, I The player I've always used that was 41 cap was Daniel Hunter. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I was kind of doing a different type of auto reorder. I, like I have two outside linebackers and a middle linebacker. So if I ever ran 3-4, I was only getting Lattimore at middle linebacker. And the reason why I did that was because BY basically just convinced me that Shazier was just too good a value at 53 cap to not use. Yeah. And then he kind of also told me, like, you're always going to be running 3-5 wide or, you know, 1-4-6 or nickel. Like, you're never really going to have to run 3-4. So I went with the Shazier, and then I was honestly only using one secure tackler. So instead of Clowney, I had a Von Miller because he had 90 speed and he had the 95 finesse for the power. Mm-hmm. And then um, just from playing J-Wall, he was using Agile Extender. And he was basically letting the, my slot cornerback come in who didn't have secure tackler and then just breaking a sack every time. And I did think, like, maybe Pavin or Boogs would use Agile. And I knew I had a chance to play Kid, but I thought Kid would also use Agile. So that's the reason why I went with the two, two secure tacklers because if I ever played anyone who ran Agile, like, let's say I could have played Clef in the finals, I could have, you know, used Justin Reed and Taylor Mays in the slot in 146 to guarantee my sacks. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's not bad, see? But yeah, I like it. Now, I want to talk about some of these games as we see Jerome Baker here. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I tell you what, Pavin is the first person that comes to mind. And, and honestly, for me, I, I was impressed with, I mean, one thing I've always been a fan of is people that, you know, when you throw an interception and you, and you still fight. You know, it's easy to throw a pick six like the first play of the game and then come back and still, you know, still put out a good fight, man. And that's something that always... Uh, is impressive to me where a lot of people can, you know, have a bad start or bad play in the game and then, you know, just kind of fold it in, you know. So talk, talk about playing Pav and, and the way he was able to respond and, you know, the way this game started with, the, I mean, another wild pick. So, I, honestly, if you told me there was one person I could choose not to play in the tournament, it was probably Pavin because, mm-hmm. honestly, if, even the first game, like, if he doesn't throw a few bad passes, like, I probably lose the first game in group by a lot. probably don't even win, you know, my group. Mm-hmm. So, like, I know Pavin, in my opinion, Pavin was playing the best offense in the tournament with the hot round master. He was flipping. He was quick hiking. So, he he had a really good balance on offense to where, like, he ran a lot of short side plays, but he also mixed in a lot of quick hiking. Yeah, his so, tempo. Like, his tempo was unreal. Like, he mixed it up very well. Yeah, that was probably the one person I didn't want to play because mm. honestly, when I was in one four six and two three six, like I just didn't feel comfortable against him flipping that much. So that's kind of why I went to like the nickel stock coverage because I knew that you know there's really not that many plays in in bunch that really beat match. Right. And I knew if he wanted to beat match, he'd have to start sending out four. He, he never honestly started doing that or not. I could have sent six when he sent out four and got pressure. All right, now, now I need help, though. I mean, I, I have run match for – I've tried to, and these kids in weekend league kill me. How does match work? All right, so the one thing I know is you always got to man up to solo side, and then you got to uh, basically man up to slot receiver because anytime you take a zone out of the out of the match, it changes the match principles. So if you leave that purple and on certain plays that, you know, the slot corner is going to man up to the outside receiver – and honestly, like, I didn't even know that until, like, maybe 30 minutes before I played my game with Pavin, where BY told me, like, yo, don't forget, you got to change that guy's adjustment. So it, it varies on different plays, but, like, usually if, that, that, if there's no zone on the left, like, that uh, the deep blue will play deeper. If there's a zone, then he can, like, buy it on routes. So it's kind of like, it's weird because sometimes it doesn't always happen. So with your user, you can't really bite on many routes, especially, like, if he ran plays with two post routes. Mm-hmm. I kind of had to run back and just choose which one the computer wasn't guarding. But, like, you know, in my opinion, Match is definitely the best defense against Bunch this year, especially since, you know, everyone loves the rollout corner out. Yeah. And then the one thing, too, is you always got to man up the outside receiver because when – if you leave them in those quarter zones, their, you know, their match uh, press principles are just terrible. So you always got to man up the solo side. Okay. So you know, for me, it's like I never know what's going to happen. And it pisses me off to learn because I'm giving up. Somebody's just wide open every time. And it's like, by the time I, I get frozen, I'm like, all right, I'm out of this. I'm done. I've had enough. So, but, I mean, this first play in this, this game, I mean, at top, you're a runner, you know. And, and like you said in the interview, if I get to 10 or 13 points, I feel good. You know, now if you get a pick six to first play, I mean, that's pretty much like there's no better feeling as a runner, as anybody, really, right? Yeah, no, it's the best way to start the game for sure. Another thing, too, was that, like, after that pick, I felt really comfortable on defense because, like, this match-style coverage, there's really not many big plays you can run in bunch. Like, unless I just, like, messed up and forget to man somebody up or just forget to do his own, 
like it, you're kind of having you, you got to take a lot of check downs you got to make it you, know, you basically got to work so i knew like you know i'm up seven zero now i get ball i have i'm basically thinking here like if i get a stop and i score like the game's basically over in the first quarter and like justin reed another thing t- people don't even realize is justin reed got 99 zone so nobody else in the game but like justin reed or anyone with 99 zone probably picks that and that was a big reason why I also went with Justin Reed because of that 99 zone. I mean, and, and this will be t- how tall is Justin Reed? He's at least six foot, right? Yeah, I think he's six foot, six one. Okay. I, I, now, the way he reached for this ball, people say like height and player, like height doesn't matter. This I hate when people say that shit. Like, I, I mean, a 5'10 player is not reaching out like this and picking this ball off. Like, that play, that play is just, uh, that was a crazy play, really. You know, and, yeah, and that's why I, I always I like tall people. I think height is a big thing. That's why I, I don't understand why so many people used uh, Golden Ticket Palomalu. Oh my God, I hate him. The the uh the basically the Golden Ticket Shazier, the 99 overall Shazier is they basically have the same stats, and he's less cap, and he's bigger. So I never really understood why a lot of people were using like the Golden Ticket Palomalu. I didn't like the, how anyone. I, honestly, I think I might have been the only person who used the Shazier. So I'm not sure if people just forgot that Shazier was in the game or if there was something that people liked more about, you know, Trevor Palomalu. But I, I didn't really understand that. And a lot of people, you know, went to ch- that way where they chose Troy P over Shazier. Yeah, I, I, I've always been against Palomalu because I, I remember I got him. Pulled, when you pull, you know, as a weekend league pro, when you pull a 99 goal or, or like you know when he was ultimate legend it's like all right let me try him and he just could not like he was just too short like the height you really notice the height and, and like i said we on the same page as far as like player players height their build even how fat they are like i want the biggest possible players as long as they're the same speed give me the biggest possible players yeah i, I agree height and weight definitely matter all right no i mean like i said pavin i it, it looked like uh, like just a bitch to defend because like you say he went with the quick snap then he went with the, the tempo I've always thought that was the best way to play offense sometimes just snap the hell out the ball other times take all day because when you're on defense you're never comfortable with a timing pattern to do your adjustments it, it's hard to lab against too because like when I was getting reps against Tony you know Tony's not used to running this offense so like mm-hmm. Tony wasn't quick hiking as much because he just doesn't feel as comfortable as, you know, doing a slide protect. Doing, you know, like, there's certain ways to do certain hot routes to just call hike faster. And honestly, he did a really good job of just mixing up his plays. The thing, too, is that, like, I, I didn't run match every single play. I had an adjustment out of cover, too, that basically took away a lot of his match beaters. And he had, I, he was, I guess he was kind of noticing that because he was definitely calling plays for cover, too. And that's a lot of things that, like, in my opinion, the best offensive players are kind of the ones who are reading your coverage. Like mm-hmm. most people just see a formation and like, okay, I know what coverage is in. He's in match and they're just going to dial up match beaters all the time. Pavin was actually trying to dial up some cover two beaters. And I was mixing in cover two a lot against him because I thought he would try. Because Clef, like basically Clef, when he played Little Man, Little Man wasn't really mixing in his coverage and just running match every single play. So Clef kind of just got, you know, to sit back there and just dial up match beaters. Pavin realized like even in the first drive that I was mixing in cover two a lot. So you can see how he ran like verticals to the short side and a lot of rollout plays that don't no, don't normally open get open against match, but they get open against cover two. Fast now, uh, like I said, I believe he does. He I don't think he scores a touchdown this whole game, All right? That's, yeah, no, that's he's six points, uh, six points, or nine points. All right, now you did have one run, uh, and I believe you said you were double teaming a D end. I mean, you guys yeah. are just absolute nerds. I try this and I get hit stick in weekend league. Tell me about this double team to D end. So, uh, basically, I kind of realized, so, like, when I was labbing runs, I was um, obviously labbing different, you know, slide protections, different motions. And when I was in weak eye close, I realized, you know, like, I seen a boat do it, boat mm-hmm. double team somebody. And I double teamed the end in weak eye close flex, and I got, like, insane blocking to where I was able to take it outside. So then I, you know, I did the same thing in wing flex close, and then the same thing happened. And I, I kind of knew wing flex close was a good matchup for your safeties and spies because you can uh, you can glitch out the safeties pretty easily, like if you run middle and then you take it to the outside. So I, I kind of took the same concept that Vote was doing and took it to the to wing flex close. Yeah, and you said that stopped them from being able to because I, I was like impressed. I thought after seeing these guys like Kiv play run defense, I was like, bro, there's no way you win without a quarterback, but. I mean, I guess that you said the double teams kind of stopped them from being able to run in there to the backfield. 
Yeah, but ba basically, you know that the animation that happens in three four where the end just like shoots mm -hmm. and basically hits you in the backfield. When you double team that left end, if that ever happens, it, it gives you that little crease to like basically run left and run through the middle. And that that's how I scored one of my touchdowns against Decroft. So like as you see, like like right there on, on that play, I just double team the left end. If I don't double team that left end, there's a big chance that that left end can just get the animation where he like basically just bull rushes my tackle and basically hits me in the backfield. Yeah. So that's why I was, you know, double teaming him basically took out that, that aspect of the defense. So it was basically like him crashing down wasn't getting the animation that he was getting against other people. Now, I do believe this gets a little bit sweaty at the end, doesn't it? He gets a, like a last drive last drive on you to try to tie like yeah. a last like Hail Mary type of. Yeah, he was. Yo, and he actually, bro, I remember this. Yo, he actually did really good. for like He had like no timeouts in like 40 seconds. And he actually got a little bit sweaty. So talk about th this situation on defense. Now me, I'm I'm putting the tucking my tail between my legs and playing like a bitch with uh what you call oh no, this I guess he just turned the ball over. So honestly that's kind of what I did where I, I played super conservative and I kinda just was giving Frank Clark honestly a chance to shed one time. Because if I get one sack, I honestly this was really bad right here because I could have made him burn a timeout. So if I don't pick my play there before him, there's no way he goes for it, right? He would have had to burn a timeout. And then he would only would have had two timeouts, so I would have wasted another 40 seconds. So me, like, not waiting to see what he came out in there, like, could have cost me the game. So that was really bad by me right there. Mm -hmm. I had to call a timeout because, I, you know, I just assumed he was going to come out a field goal. And then he actually messed up. And I, I'm assuming Axe Madden told him to go for it. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this. I, really I mean, you got to call. It's nothing else you yeah, can right really here. do. Like, you yeah, can't I, even. Got to call a timeout. Yeah, Axe Madden. But, but you, you, I mean, I'm not even mad at that because. I mean, ass mad and just that needs to get taken out. That fourth, fourth, we've all done it. Just mash A to get to your next play, and all oh, we're in. We're, we're, let's yeah, go like for if this. He, if he call, if he burns a time out there, he has to basically kick, kick out, and then if he doesn't get it, the game is just over. And then yeah, like when his last drive, his you know game, you know game time drive because that was a fate, so you can only tie the game. Mm -hmm. I did play, I play like super conservative, honestly. I, I probably should have played a little more aggressive and just sent everyone because mm -hmm. I'm like a sack away from winning the game. But I kind of was like, you know, I'm spending 105 cap on Frank. So, Frank, go get the man. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't – I would have played the same way. I would have played, you know, the because the worst case scenario is that you could say you tie the game up. And if you do all that, like, it's kind of like kudos at that point. Now, I'll tell you, I, I, I might tell you might have been the best punter of the weekend. You know, you did a pretty good job with your boy Tressway. Uh, I don't think I you mean, put one in balance, man. So, what is, <laughs> so, was it a lot of practice with your boy Tress? Let's just say there was a lot of – so, like, people are probably not going to believe this, but I actually, like, there will be times where I'm just bored on Madden and, like, you know, there's nothing to do. So, I'll just go kick field goals. So, like, there, there was a time where I, I, like, forced myself to get 50 out of 50 perfect from 50. And I, I was doing the same thing with punts because sometimes, like, when I was playing lab games, um, my controller would vibrate like crazy, honestly, and the ball wouldn't go out of bounds. And I didn't want to give up any free touchdowns. Like, the one thing you want to do when, you know, you don't have a, a player on offense minus your running back, mm -hmm. uh, you can't you can't give up a free point. So I had to make sure that, you know, every punt I had was out of bounds. If people were going to score on me, you know, you, you have to earn it. I will, And I just, I said this while I was doing the watch part. Joke is the best field goal kicker in the world. Like, he don't, like, he hit them Jones perfect every time. I've always thought that. Like, I don't know how you do it. Me? <laughs> I'm I'm lucky the game is very uh the game is very lenient on how bad you can be on your accuracy on field goal case. But like I said, that's so all it pays off. There you go, Chad. Let's sit in there and practice mode, kick some field goals and some punts. Cause you're right, man. It, this is the thing about not having an, a quarterback. You have to be elite on the other two two phases of football. Honestly, you can't make mistakes there, and you have to be really good there. You know, and, and like I said about Pavin this last drive, I thought he did as I, this is damn near impossible this year. It's impossible. Uh, with 40 seconds, no timeouts with the whole field, and he did a pretty good job. Yeah, no, this was definitely a good game time drive for sure. Like all, he, the thing too that he did such a good job of was any play that just didn't look good, he didn't waste any time. He just threw it away immediately. Or he took like, his, right, he, he took his like eight yeah. yard, he took his eight yards with Vic. He didn't try to force a pass. He was just like, all right, I'll take these little eight yards on the sideline and get out, give myself another chance. Yeah, he, he, he like I'm pretty sure here he's gonna see that I'm guarding the post and he's gonna throw it away like immediately. Like, I feel like a lot of people would have waited to see if, like, that guy is going to outrun me towards the sideline. And, you know, that's going to take, like, three or four more seconds. Mm -hmm. And he just threw it out immediately. Like, he threw the ball away immediately when he didn't, like, you know, when he didn't get the look he liked, he just threw it away immediately. 
Vic, Vic got stamina issues, man. I feel like the running back never gets tired, and and the quarterback gets tired instantly. Just another example of, you know, how it's the, the, the running back has more stamina. Quarterback, but I know the running backs get tired. Oh, Vic just be catching catching his breath all the time. So at this point, like I remember telling myself, like all right, I'm done with this coverage shit. Frank is not getting to the quarterback. I, I'm pretty sure I'm like all right, I'm sending people now. I'm pretty sure here. Uh, I'm, I'm blitzing seven. I'm pretty sure. If not, I'm user rushing. Now, did, did, did you like, uh, did you try that? The, the, you saw the user rush that they had the eight one eight had, had. Did you try that at all? Did you know about that running through the eight gap before this tournament? Yeah. So uh, basically, when I was preparing for uh, Pavin, I, I always go into a game with like a plan A and a plan B. And you know, my plan A was nickel normal. My plan B was going to run one four six. And I was going to blitz the outside corner a lot, and I was going to do that user rush. So I did lab that user rush. I actually tried it twice this game, and I, I don't know why it never worked, but that was something I did lab. I don't know if you have to be a blitzing user or you have to still be manned up on the running back. I really don't know, but I've been I've been trying to mix it in. But uh, when, when I when I labbed it, I, I was you know just on a, in a blitz angle, and then this mm-hmm. is like where I, where I tell you like I realized he was way too comfortable, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to send everybody. I'm having two inverts and a third. And because a sack ends the game, and I was playing way too conservative, so I, I decided to let him hang here and say, "Fuck it!" Like if you're gonna score, you're gonna score by me sending seven. Yeah, there you go. And that's the problem. And one thing about nobody had like a big, nobody had Calvin, you know. And that's where it's like, okay, you can throw it up to John Ross, but shit, the way this game played now, you can throw them. To, if you got a six four, six five guy, they got a shot in a one on one. Where John Ross, I, I'd live with it, but. And then that's something I wish these guys would have had was a little bit bigger wide receiver. To, and that, but obviously you never build a team for a situation where you got to chuck the ball up. But having all Calvin the was good until uh, Denzel Ward came out though, because mm-hmm. Calvin used to basically like body bag everybody, like all the other corners. But once mm-hmm. Denzel Ward came out, Denzel Ward could play Calvin one on one on an island, which is why I think people kind of started going away from from Calvin. From Calvin, yeah. That's really yeah. Okay. But like I said, the only situation I would guarantee have another one is one where you gotta just chuck chuck the ball up. Because John Ross, he not <laughs> he not teabagging anybody. But there you go. Now you win that one. I I, I felt I felt like uh, one your run game was really good for that game because I thought you wouldn't be able to get nothing. Obviously, you were really prepared and it worked out perfectly. You know. So yeah, and the Decroft game I was really comfortable against Decroft. Decroft is the person I played the most out of obviously E and B leading into this tournament and mm-hmm. uh i had when i was playing him i was getting a lot of sacks like he was basically struggling against one four six mm-hmm. so going into that tournament i felt really you know into that final game i felt really comfortable because i knew that you know i was basically like one or two runs away from becoming you know the champion because i did think I- i'd be able to bag him and I- his uh he had a really bad offensive line too so that helped it as well now, all right, there's one thing you did that I was screaming for Clef to do when he was playing, and I feel like you spied every single play because he these get you know the TNC guys like to hug the center. They have really good pocket presence stepping up in the pocket. They really do, and if and because they have, especially him because he has the center, and I feel like you have to spy that type of player and almost make it like a delayed blitz so they're not comfortable stepping up in the pocket. Yeah, I, I basically did the skimble. Where I manned up the running back. The, the safety, I mean, the linebacker to the running back, mm-hmm. which would obviously, A, help my blitz come free, and then, B, if it didn't come free, it was basically a spy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was something I did every play. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people were giving D. Croft uh, too much yards with the quarterback just by, you know, stepping up and scrambling for 10. Mm-hmm. So I knew that was something I was never going to do. Even when I ran coverage, I had a spy. Because, you know, even though he's only 84 speed or whatever A-Rod is, everyone would escape artists and scramble up the middle for 10. And I do mm-hmm. feel like a lot of people played really good. I was honestly shocked that Clef really didn't blitz Decroft that much. And, you know, mm-hmm. Clef, in my opinion, is like an aggressive style player. I thought he was going to blitz a lot more than he and did. Then, and then another thing that you did that other people don't do is you move the slot corner in. So that makes him have to block that tight end or at least think about it, right? Like, if you don't move that slot corner in, like, he can, he's comfortable as, as all can be. And nobody else really did that. And it just it was just that. That's the two things I would have did. If I play this formation, I'm going to move. Even if I don't blitz ever, I'm going to move the slot corner in and I'm going to spy somebody. Those are the two number things I would, I would do against this formation. Yeah, he, he can't block. The, if So if you send five, if he doesn't max protect, he, excuse me, he can't block the blitz. Mm-hmm. And then 
if even if he max protects and you send five, what happens a lot is his center would pass off Frank Clark to my you know yep. his guard, mm -hmm. and then if, if that ever happened, Frank Clark was shedding immediately because he had fourteen cap. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew going into the game, I like all right, I'm gonna send five a lot, and even if he you know blocks three, there's really only one play he can run when he blocks three, which was basically like the buck sale, yep. which is the post to act in the in route. So like I, I knew I was gonna make him block seven a lot, and I, I had twelve sacks on this game. Yeah, and then, then that play, the, the, and I said every time D, D. Crawford runs it, I feel like that's his worst play because you got to sit there and wait. You know, that, it's, that's Buck's bad pat sale for the last what four years. You have to sit there and wait to see what they guard. And with Frank Clark, it's just it's just not going to work out for you. Yeah, another thing two people didn't do was people had the linebackers on the line of scrimmage, so they didn't like they couldn't do the skimbo where you man up the linebacker from you know out the gap and you basically glitch the running back mm -hmm. so I, I was shocked that more people didn't play defense like this but honestly it's, it's also because i played d croft a lot and i knew you, you couldn't really run like cover three against them because when he motioned anyone to the left side of the field it would kind of glitch your adjustments to where you couldn't put him in a quarter or third you could put him in a curl flat and that's a purple so then to get him just back to a curl i mean a cloud flat you had to shake down, down and shade up, up. Yeah. so a lot of people you know just weren't comfortable against that and, you know, it's kind of tough to play somebody who's not D Croft. And, like, because, you know, that happens a lot. You play somebody that's not the person you're playing and you bag them and then you play the actual person who runs the offense and you don't. So, it, I, honestly, it helped a lot that I played him so many times. I, I probably played him like 15 or 20 times before the Madden Bowl. Mm -hmm. so, and I don't, I honestly, I don't think he crosses the 50 until maybe like the last <laughs> when the game's over. You know, so. he, he actually does, he doesn't complete a pass till the end of the third quarter, which is just crazy when he's uh you know you know passing offense because he just got sacked so often. Like this drive, I sacked him three straight drives, three straight plays, and then we you know right back to offense. And as you guys can see, like if he ever sent out the tight end, he was just getting sacked instantly. So as an offensive player, you pretty much got to like rule out ever sending out the tight end, like. And that's one thing I hate about you know Trey White flex and, and like you almost have to motion block and waste that wide receiver every single play just because of the threat of 146. And that's why a good 146 is like, bro, you're, you're just not going to be that successful every drive against it, you know, and you, you're going to almost turn the ball over as much as you are going to get points, I, I feel. Yeah, the thing too is that if he, so I basically had a coverage adjustment. So I was running coverage. I ran coverage to sink every play. So I'm able to three wreck the blitz in slot corner. So if he was to start max protecting a lot, what I would do was three rack that blitzing slot corner, and then I would spy one of the linebackers, and that three rack would take away his short route, and I would guard his you know deep route. So it's not like he sat there and max pro every play because the max pro plays in that formation aren't as good as the one in bunch. So it, you know like basically I was going into the game like if I see him blocking the tight end every single play, I'm gonna run more coverage, and then until he starts blocking that tight end, I knew I was gonna send five. So I was kind of like, you know, guessing what he was going to do. And most of the times I felt like I guessed right. And, and this is, honestly, you ran, ran the ball better than I, I thought you would after seeing everybody's three three five defense the first couple of weeks. So uh, all that being said, you actually did score fairly decently for no quarterback. You know, I, I think uh, going into these games, if I told you you'd get one long touchdown run a game, you, you'd probably take that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially like... Just because, I, honestly, I, I was like, so Chaz has like, we have a, on our Discord, we have this thing called Chaz Takes, where Chaz just says outrageous shit, mm. and we just laugh. And one of the Chaz Takes was, I'm just going to run dive until my dick falls off and mm -hmm. hope to keep three. And yeah. that was like a legit thing. Like, once I got to like the 45, the 46, I'm like, all right, I'm three yards away from three, I'm running dive, and I'm getting three. And I, in this game, twice on like third and six, third and seven, I crib a run where I was honestly just trying to take, you know, get three. Mm -hmm. And this right here, so like, uh, this is another thing I did with um, just honestly being able to like practice. So Stevie used to be able to run on this defense. And as you guys can see, I'm going to flip my formation. I'm going to double team his user. And me double teaming his user does the same thing that, you know, it did in the 3 5 wide, where that left end isn't going to shoot the gap. And obviously he didn't know that. So this got me two touchdowns. And this was something that I like Stevie texted me the same day of the tournament. So this was like a big reason why I got to win this game. Like, as you guys can see, you see how that, that guy comes free. Yeah. But when that guy comes free, his linebacker gets picked up. So I'm able to just run around them. Now, uh, see, so you got like an army of runners, bro. That's what uh, like you have an army. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't have no runners, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm gonna show up with a. I'm gonna find the runners. They're out there somewhere. Listen, bro, you have a army. Like what the hell? Like I'm, and shoot, but yeah, now now is a position where it's like, man, I'm just gonna get this field goal no matter what, you know? Yeah, like here, I, I was honestly like, I'm at the 39. I'm 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 cool with taking three, and you know, just getting right back on defense. So at this point, like, I'm never running anything but a dive. And like you're gonna see every time he's in this, I'm running it flipped, and I'm gonna ID his user, and, and you know that he's never gonna be able to shoot that gap. And that that this is the run that honestly won me the tournament because you know this is the one that that really worked in the finals. And as like, you can see, like that left hand doesn't come free. I see. No, all right. No, it is something I want to talk about that happened the last the next play because I believe you scored a touchdown. I don't want to be giving up too many of these single these runs, man. Yeah, I, I already have enough hard enough time stopping the run. <laughs> Those fucking scumbags, man. I see Joe Thomas out here at wide receiver. Oh, uh, he's a god. I, was, I, you know, I thought he would be slow because I went and bought the card for Blast, right, <laughs> to put him in wide receiver. But he actually has like seventy-seven speed. Like Jesus. Yeah, nah, he's, he's going. I mean, this is just. And as you guys, I'm just, as, as long as, as soon as I saw this defense, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I was just going to keep doing it until basically he got out of it. Now, why we go with Gale Sarris? Is it cap reason or did you like him or like? So honestly, I was using Bo, right? 88 cap Bo, but Bo was 98 speed. But we were told that we were either going to A, be able to get 40 out of 40 for a team. So obviously I, I would be able to get Bo at a 99 speed or Coach Madden was going to be allowed. And like maybe a week and a half before the tournament, we're basically told like, all right, we, we we can't use stadiums because we need to play in the Pizza Hut Stadium, and we can't use Coach Madden. So then I'm like, I, I'm at a decision where I'm like, all right, do I use Bo for 88 cap at 98 speed, or do I use Gale for 88 cap and 99 speed? Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of games where I was playing with Bo where I was just getting caught by you know like how to have a big run and get caught, and I was like, all right, f it, I gotta use I gotta use Gale like he's smaller and all. But I got to use a guy who's faster because if I break the run, I got to be able to score. Now, I, I want to talk about this right here because old joke. See, I remember a joke that I played one time in the Final Four and he accepted a penalty with the, with the defender going all sides when he no huddled, man. See, old joke. <laughs> What are you know what I'm saying? Would have said, nah, I'm not giving this five yards back. Talk about, I feel like you've become a, a more mature man and, and talk about this situation because obviously it's his fault for changing his camera to, to, to punt and then he's stuck in this. So talk about what happened here. So at, at first, I honestly didn't really know what happened. So like, you know, just because I don't know what happened, I'm going to accept, you know, obviously accept it. For sure. And then uh, as a uh, child comes in, it's like, you know, his camera angle was locked. I'll be right back. And I'm kind of thinking like, you know, let me not accept this and get some bad karma. Plus, D-Cross is a really nice kid. And, you know, in my opinion, if, uh, if, if it, you know, the tables were turned, I think D-Cross would have declined it. Had I been playing Clef, I, I, I'll tell you this right now, I would have, you know, obviously kept the delay. because I mean, I would have accepted the penalty because he did it against D-Cross. But I, I did feel like D-Cross is the kind of person that would have declined it. So, you know, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And when he came back in, I just told Chow, like, you know, I'll go back off sides. Like, it's cool. So... By this, when we took about Madden 18, and you accepted, so pretty much I was a scumbag, and you thought I would have accepted that penalty. Oh, and so that, I, in, in the final four of a tournament, and your computer goes off sides, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we're all accepting that. So, you know, I, I did say sorry, W, but I felt bad, but, you know, you got to do it. Like, Jesus. you know, this is like the start of the game. Like, you know, if this is maybe the fourth quarter, and, you know, the game's a little closer, then I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm – you know, I'm, I'm accepting it. Right, but, I, you know, right. I started the game. I, I don't know. I didn't want no bad juju. Plus, I didn't want to seem like the bad guy. Like, I've been trying to be a better person. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like his first drive. So, I was like, you know, like five yards isn't going to be the reason why I win or lose this game. So, you know, I, I just, sure. you know, as soon as the child came to talk to me, I was like, it's cool, child. You know, I'll go all sides. For sure. All right. But then, like I said, like I said, between blitzing off that tight end side, he really didn't score. I mean, he didn't. This was... As much as Spoto <laughs> lost the journey, what was that, like 41-0? to zero? I mean, this was, I mean, I want to say almost as bad. You know, it's just a different Madden uh, where, you know, the, the clock is shorter, especially the way you're playing is you want the game to be, you know, a 10-minute game. 
you know, so you're not going to score 41 points. But I, I mean, this is probably just as bad as, as Journey beat Spoto for, for the championship. All right, right? His uh, his first completion coming in the third is pretty crazy when he's you know, not in a pass heavy offense. Like, I didn't even realize that until, like, I forgot somebody told me, like, yo, you know, he didn't complete a pass to the third quarter. And I was just like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And, and I'm, I just, yeah. So, all right, going go to these games. Uh, go, I think that's my next topic. Essentially, going into these, now you know this is on ESPN. This is going to be the main game of the year. Do you have any, like, is there any stress on you to, like, let's make sure this is a good game or I hope, you know, maybe, I, you know, put on a show for everybody watching at home. Is there any thought to that for you? To be honest, no. Nah, like, I feel like every time I thought about more than the game, like, you know, obviously, like, anything other than the game, I feel like I played terrible. Like, you know, I, I was thinking about what was I going to say if, if I won the challenge and then, you know, Clef beats me by 30. I, I was thinking what I was going to say if I won clubs and then Drini beats me. So I honestly, like, wasn't thinking about anything. Like, the whole time I was just thinking about, like, what I was going to do on, on defense, uh, basically what runs I was going to call. Like, I was honestly just thinking about the game and I, I wasn't worried about anything like that at all. Like, I was just super focused on just trying to win my, you know, my first belt finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as we saw, Gail Sayers fumble before half. Uh, how many times did you turn the ball over in this tournament? None. Right. I mean, other than punts, I, I never had a turnover. Yeah, that's uh, the nasty streak was going crazy there. But like I said, this game was was pretty much cooked. I mean, at what point of this game? Now, uh, at what point do you feel like this game is cooked? Because I, so, I, you get a, you get a vibe when you're playing somebody that all right. I mean, obviously, I'm just but you get a vibe like all right, this person can't score. You know, you get that vibe whether it be the second quarter, or third, whatever it may be, and that kind of changes how you play the game, right? Yeah. So I, when I score right here, so as remember I told you before, like if the dude ever shot, I could do that little thing where I go left mm-hmm. and then right. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I did right there. So that's something I had lab before. Like I knew that as soon as I saw the animation, I could do that little cut left to right. So as soon as I scored here, I was like, all right, like I'm, I'm getting close to this game's basically over. And I knew I was one stop away from, you know, winning the game. And I, I think I, uh, I think I, I gave up two completions and then sack him three straight times. And that's when like, once I basically got the ball in field goal range, with, oh, I think over. with four minutes left, I'm like, all right, like this game is close to over. Gail serious, eh? All right, so talk about – all right, after you win this game, now, you said that was your brother that was with you? Yeah, that was my brother. Now, is he sitting there, like, watching you, or what's his, what's his like, angle to watch the game? Because, I mean, I don't so, talk to me about My brother that. was actually upstairs. So, my brother was upstairs, and once I went up, like, 17-0, where the game was almost over, mm-hmm. I heard my door open at, like, you know, like a minute left. So, I'm okay. assuming that's when he, like, came down to, like, you know, celebrate and all. Okay. But he, yeah. he was watching the game. Because we live in the same building, so he was uh-huh. watching from his apartment upstairs. So, yeah, that would have creeped me out if he was, like, right next to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, dude. You know what's actually crazy was that EA actually had sent out um, somebody to, like, basically record me, like, getting ready for the tournament. Like, you know, for the whole day. Mm-hmm. So, there was actually somebody in my room, like, recording me play the whole, you know, the game the whole time. Yeah, that's a little. I guess you get used to it from being at, at the events and everything, but being at home would be a little creepier. I don't, I don't know, but honestly, I, 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 like you really didn't even like realize. Like, I feel like when you're playing, like you're just so locked in. Like, you know, I honestly like I feel like you just kind of block everything out. Like, mm-hmm. and this right here, I, after I got this sack, this is when like it kind of started to hit me. Like, like I finally won. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I felt like he didn't play. He didn't play a good game for his. For his uh, as I well, I just thought he didn't call too many plays, and a lot of it came down to how you played defense against him. Really, you know. And, yeah, but, Frank, Frank Hart was pretty crazy this game as well. Despite yeah. like you know a defense where you can bring pressure, you're making the offense max protect. He doesn't really have that many max protect plays, and then there was a play where he did max protect. Uh, he, there was a play where I sent three and he sent out five and you just get sacked immediately. Like, that's discouraging for sure. Yeah, because you kind of got to guess, like, all right, he's not going to blitz here. Let me send out everybody. And when you're wrong, you're you're done. You're cooked. Yeah, one, one sack, too, especially when you play against, you know, like the thousand cap defense, one sack could definitely ruin the whole drive. 
All right, let me see what else. I know I do want to talk about Madden 20 as a whole. Like, obviously, this is you're the best player in Madden 20. All right, where where do you and we've talked about this since the tournament. Like, what do you think about the game? Where does it rank uh, as far as MCS Madden? As we talked about between 16 to 20, and then as far as Madden all time. Like, what do you think? Because a lot of people don't like it. I purpose. I I have fun playing the game. Uh, I don't think it's. I, I don't think it's awful, but I just think, you know, having four winners that haven't passed has to be a bad thing. What do you think about the game ultimately? Yeah, I, I agree. Obviously, it's not one of the best Maddens ever. But, I mean, if, if you really think about it, we really haven't had a really good Madden during the MCS era since Madden no Madden 17. Madden 17 was really the game, the structure. Everything about Madden 17 was perfect. And since then, we you know, we've taken steps backwards, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, this year it's going to get a lot of backlash, obviously, because it's a run-heavy type game. But I feel like, you know, the, the best players should adjust to the game. And yeah. the game has been the same all year. Like, you know, r- the run was honestly meta until maybe this last tournament where I honestly thought maybe somebody in Bunch could win the tournament. And mm-hmm. even then, like, you know, I feel like the game has just been so run-heavy and just people really haven't adjusted to the game. And I feel like that's one thing I'm always going to do. Like, I'm always going to adjust to the game, whether I got to run bunch or whether I got to run the ball every single play. I'm going to, you know, play the game the way that, in my opinion, it should be played. And that's like, I did that this year from the start of the year. And I feel like, honestly, for every tournament, you know, maybe minus the challenge, because there wasn't really like, you couldn't really be ahead of the curve. I feel mm-hmm. like I was ahead of the curve scheme wise for every single tournament this year. I mean, that, that I- I, I do feel that way, and and before I do that, I do I will say that that is what has always been your strength. I mean, whether it be bunch, even though know, it was a little sloppy, you know, whether it be bunch or when Mad Seventeen, you were in tight flex. Remember the end of that year? That was probably the best offense or one of the best offenses. You ran that, and you even talking about Man Sixteen with tight offset. And, like, you, you've always ran, like, all right, this is the best offense, and I'm adjust to the game. And it's honestly something that I'm terrible at. You know, it's something that is a super weakness of my, myself, you know, whereas I'm, like, I'm going to, like, do what I'm comfortable with and try to make it work as opposed to you saying, this is what's good at the game. Let me you know, expand my, my versatility and, and use that offense to, to, to the best of its ability because it's the best in the game. And honestly, I think that's something that it's easy to look at this year and say, Joe just ran. But when you look back at all these years, you pretty much just been in what you seem is the best offense for the year, right? Even last year, if you really think about it, I was the first person using the double chem receivers, and I, I was using that during clubs. And then after I did it, everyone else did it. This year, I was the first person running wind flex close with the you know nasty streak. Mm-hmm. And this year, I was the first person running blast. And I, I wasn't the you know obviously the, the the first person running the the boat scheme, but I was the last person to run it. So I do feel like every tournament, I have basically out strategized the entire field. And I feel like you know when. When you're playing against the best Madden players in the world, like you have to be ahead of the curve, and that's one thing that I've you know tr- always tried to be. And last year for the biggest tournament, I, you know I was ahead of the curve, and this year, in my opinion, for every tournament I, other than the challenge, because there's really no curve to be ahead of, mm-hmm. I was really ahead of like the whole you know strategy wise. I feel like I went into that tournament with the best strategy. Well, I do feel like the classic. I mean, if we, I feel like you play that how many times in a row? I feel like you you know, can win that tournament pretty easily. I think that's the one time this year where you got, you know, unfortunate in that game versus Henry, which you you, you would have won head and you got that one field goal. You know, I really thought that. And I, I'll be honest, that was probably the only time I really rooted for you because you had the Eagles. I, I, was, I was proud of you. You did good. I, <laughs> and that, that really was, like, the best scheme at the time, you know. But uh, there you go. I mean, now, I said, I mean, do you think Madden 20 being having no quarterback, do you think – uh, we'll look back at that and it kind of diminish the accomplishment you had this year? I, I don't think so because if you really think about it, like to dominate a whole year basically the way I did because, you know, like final, you know, fifth, mm-hmm. third, third, and then a win, like obviously I had to be that much better than everyone, right? Because like you can't have those placings and not be the best. So like, yeah, you can say the game was bad, but you can say that about every year, honestly. Like you can say 18 was bad. You can say 19 was bad. Like, the only game where we really can't say, like, yeah, the game was bad was, you know, 17. Because even Madden 16, like, you could just aggressive catch everything. Yeah, Madden 16 so was... I feel like if, if you're going to say that I won because Madden 20 was bad, we can say that about everyone who's won in every I game. I mean, we do kind of say even... I mean, Stiff obviously gets a lot of shit. Um, but even Dynasty, you know, like, you think about 09 and 10 when he was good. 09 was, dude, 
That was yeah, I, for me. That's the worst, the worst game for me. I I I don't care about you know no quarterback this year. I still have O nine as the worst. You know, and that's something we always talk about dynasty. Like yeah, we'll just fullback dive toss and throw a curl of wit in there. Martellus Bennett. I mean like that's whip the wheel. You know, I'll tell you one thing. One thing that was really really good about this game that people don't mention is. For the last three years, since Madden 17, Madden 17, 18, and 19, one defense stopped every single formation in the game. Nickel normal stopped goal line, I form pro, I form tight, every shotgun in the world. Madden 18, 3 to 5 normal stopped everything. Madden 19, 3 to 5 normal stopped everything. This year was the only Madden in a while since maybe, I don't know, maybe Madden 16, where you have to have run different defenses mm-hmm. against basically everything. And I feel like that's why I was so much better than everyone on defense because you know, I felt comfortable running 3-4, three, 3-4 four, three, four bear, nickel normal, 1-4-6, 2-3-6. And I kind of just like knew when I seen a formation, like I knew what kind of defense I had to run. And I don't feel like – I feel like that's something that like, you know, we've been – we've honestly been lucky where a, a lot of – like Pavin last year was the best player on defense and he ran 3-5 normal against everything. Mm-hmm. So I, that's the one thing that I, I do take away from this game that I really did enjoy was that – you have to be really versatile on defense to really be elite on defense, and it ha- Madden hasn't been like that in a while. Now, I, and when you say that, I th- and I've said this a lot, is I feel like Madden twenty is a good foundation for a Madden. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they can build from this game. You know, I feel like a, a couple tweaks here and there between the tackle and the pursuit, and it, just a bunch of little stuff if they fix it. I feel like this game could be really good. Do you feel that way? I, I agree. I feel like if run commit was a lot better than it was and the catching abilities weren't as crazy as they are, and they just helped the receivers get open, I do feel like this could have been one of the best Maddens ever because it's it's a re- like you really have to be versatile to be you know good in this game. And, I, you know, just because I won, I'm not going to disagree. Like, I don't think a 10-cap quarterback should ever win a tournament. So yeah. the fact that run commit was as bad as it, it was this year, is, it's, it's really a big reason why a lot of people didn't like Madden 20. So if run commit was better, I definitely think this could have been, like, one of the better Maddens that ever came out. Yeah, because it's just imagine if run commit was really that good, you would you would have to have a quarterback, some type of receivers, and and I, I think, shoot, I, I think it would make, I I, th- I think those are the best offenses. Like you said, like the journey type of stuff. If you can execute that and run the ball well, I think those are a pain in the ass to use. And essentially, that's what everybody would have used if run commit worked. Something like that with a quarterback and being able to pass just a little bit. You know, I think that would make the game a, a lot better. Yeah, uh, I agree. going forward. Um, that's what I want to ask. Okay. Now, you did bring up the year. Now, you know, we're going to have to argue about this because you, you did say this was the best MCS year ever. Is that, that, is that you, what you're standing to that? Uh, I, honestly, after looking back at the, the Skimbo year, I'm really not going to argue it because I don't obviously don't want to take anything away from him. Both years were obviously great. I do say when, when you guys argue this, there's two important parts that you guys have to argue. Point A was Skimbo had an extra, extra, you know, tournament than me to go to because he was able to play in five majors. I only got to play in four, and he did. You know, there was one placing, one placement where he didn't do that well that year. And then I, I think the one thing that doesn't get talked about enough is honestly, if if I don't run commit against Paven, you think about I, I'll go six and zero in the Madden Bowl, and basically like that, the 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 run I would have gone through, like let's just say I beat Pavin twice, I beat Drini, I beat Bo. I beat Boogs and then win the belt. Like, I do feel like that this was one of the more dominant runs in a tournament and, like, you know, obviously maybe Boats running clubs. So I do feel like that should be brought up a little bit because I really do feel like I kind of dominated the Madden Bowl. And it's hard to dominate a tournament where it's the last one. It's the one where people have to qualify to play in. So it's the 16 best players in the world. And I actually did the math. And so I gave up, obviously, seven points off a run commit. And I gave up seven points to vote when I was up 21. Or actually, no, I was up 28. So if you take away those 14 points that I gave up, I gave up 5.2 points a game. And that's kind of crazy when you're playing against the best Madden players in the world, especially this late in the year when everyone knows everything. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like defensively, this was the best, like, defensive tournament anyone's ever played. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I would agree. Um, I also, as far as the points... I mean, you just you do got to factor in how short the games are. You know, you're not having six, seven possessions each. You know, but like I said, uh, I see you don't want to see. I, earlier in the week, you were a little more strong with you. Uh, this was the best year ever. 
you know, honestly, yeah, I forgot that Skimbo made a, a final four of finals and a win. And, and, I thought he made a fine. I thought he made two final eights of finals and a win. No, he he honestly, when you look back at Skimbo's year in Madden 17, right? Obviously, he wins the championship versus problem in a hell game, his first belt, right? But then he loses the beast mode in a hell game where he fumbled when he was going to take up the lead and he do a slot streak into the end zone. So he he could have won that game. Like it wasn't like super fluky, but he could have won that game. And then the way he lost to me in the final four when he was up ten with two minutes left. So so looking back at Simbo's year, a couple other things break his way. He could have won three of those belts. You know, and that's pretty crazy, uh really, uh how good a year he had in Madden seventeen. And then, like you brought it up with me, that you know that North Carolina tournament, man, you got that's got to be down here somewhere. That thirty k cash, which I don't know where those people went, but if you guys are out there and want to throw another thirty thousand dollar tournament in North Carolina in July, we would all be down for that because th- that was a fun time, you know. But uh, yeah, like, but that, these are very comparable, honestly. They they really are. Uh, but like I said, do you think there was? For that year, the top, the prize pool for that you know that year was also a lot better than the prize pool for this year, where like all the tournaments were so top heavy. So, you oh, know, yeah. he he won a hundred thousand the last tournament. I won sixty five thousand. Yeah. So that's a big reason too why he obviously won more money than me. Mm-hmm. I, I the big thing though is the average EA major finish, and that's uh his his was three three point seven five, and that's without even counting the uh, the um. You know the the one the club series where he lost in, so like I feel like you know I averaged the top four finish, which is kind of crazy. Did you play and, the, and, the club series in Man Seventeen? Yeah, I got cheated. Remember uh, Matt Mark who let uh, oh you got booted. Have somebody, my, uh, Ish had uh, Cam play for him. No, Cam had Ish play for him, and there was like a ton of proof, and Mark who didn't ban him. So you didn't qualify, is what you're saying? Uh, because so yeah, all right. I, so, I had two days to qualify. I stayed up all day for two days. I was top four in my club for, you know, obviously Jags. And then, like, last minute, uh, Ish plays a few games. No, yeah, Ish plays a few games for Cam, and he didn't get banned. So because of Ish, you didn't make it. Come on, dude. Yeah. Ish? Oh, yeah. man. That's rough. But, yeah, I, I didn't play in that. And the real I didn't play in that is because when I – made the final four, I went home and just practiced what I'm going to do against Skimbo for seven days. You know, I had and a that, that's, the thing too. Like, that's why I was so, like, upset about, like, you know, Mark Hule and that happened was because right before that t- tournament was the Madden Bowl, and I had just, like, you know, obviously I was preparing for the Madden Bowl, so I wasn't playing club series at all. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I had three days to, you know, qualify for the club series. Yeah. And that was three days where I played Madden all day. Like, you know, obviously barely slept, spent so much time on it. And then... Obviously, like I had like videos of Cam being at a Super Bowl party in Houston, and getting wins, and getting wins. <laughs> and you know he's at a Super Bowl party in Houston, and he's moving up the leaderboards. It's not bad. I need to find somebody to do that for me. I'm saying. And then like yeah, so like I was really upset about that, and I, I do feel like you know I maybe win that because I was really good at Madden 17, especially at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean 17 was good. Uh, the, the one thing when you look at there were so many good things about Man 17 that they did not continue to, you know, kind of incorporate throughout 18, 19, and 20. You know, I just feel like if you look back at the last four years, if they take all the good shit, right, and put it together, I think, like, it would be great. That's that's how I feel about it, honestly. I feel like the, the best thing, honestly, is the, the best thing about it was the top 32. Because you basically give yourself a chance to, you know, win $100,000 and – that that's the the most important thing about it. like I feel like the final event should be minimum twenty four people like it's hard to be t- you know top sixteen in points when we only have three tournaments like you're one tournament away from getting cheated and you know not having a good year like this year Beast Mode made a final six he won his club and then he played poorly in, in DC and he doesn't make the Madden Bowl yeah. Tony uh, wins his club makes final I believe twelve in you know regs. Then is one game before the live event for the challenge doesn't make the final 16. So I feel like it's tough to like say that they're getting the best 16 Madden players in the Madden Bowl mm-hmm. when there's just so many, you know, it's so limited 
ways of getting yeah, points. Like, look, they had bugs in there. How can you say it's the 16 best and bugs is in there? You know, that's just hey, like. I, I need to know who let bugs go out there with no receiver cams. I don't know who I got to talk to. Bro, I've been streaming. I haven't been. Bro, I don't know what's. Uh, dude, all I did was hit him up. I said, yo, y'all need help. Hit me up. I'll play, whatever. I did not look at the. I, I, I was mad he didn't go with Michael Vick. I don't know how, I, dude. And and yeah, I don't oh, that's know. A, yeah, he remembered a 130 cap quarterback with no dashing, no sideline dead eye, no nothing. Like I, I his team building, honestly, I, I don't know if he was playing with NFA. I don't know who he was taking, you know, advice from. But that his team was bad, and you know that that I did, you know, obviously reached out to him after the game, said GG, like because you know obviously you know Bugs will win one sooner than later, mm-hmm. and I was like. That team was I, I had to hear a reasoning behind it because the team like that team just wasn't constructed to really like I feel like you're playing against me and vote as much as you want to have a power specialist you got to go with secure tackler instead because at first you, you got to worry about your group before you worry about the tournament no oh okay. tell me this too was that not the best books run defense you've ever seen in his career yes yes, yes. what if, what <laughs> Yo, that's why I said yeah. if but if you told him, if you would have told me Bugs had run defense like this, I'd have told you he'd have, he'd have won the group. I, uh, he got to be able to score ten points. Like what? He did really bad. Go. Okay, he bagged vote. He just couldn't score. I'm like, bro, you might as well have went with Trey White Flex out there. Then really, I mean, shoot, I forget. I mean, you got to score. That's the most important thing is being able to score. Like as much as defense helps, but if you can't score, you can't win. That's how I feel. But, I think uh, the yeah. way he- though he should have honestly just used like a lower Patrick Mahomes because he really wasn't throwing passes on the run like that's what he said I, I, yeah I'm out in the pocket more so like, right. yeah if he's gonna be in the pocket he should have you know saved cap on the quarterback and spent cap on the receivers because when I played him I was just manning up his outside guy every play and mm. like you know the crossing route was just getting bodied by uh any cornerback I had there because if you don't have an ability this year like it doesn't matter if you got 99 route running 99 right. beat press 99 speed if you don't got an ability, you're not getting open. Yeah, I, I agree. If you're not, if you don't have ability, you're not doing nothing. That, that that's how the game works. You're not shedding. If you got a D lineman, it, it's just it's night and day between somebody with an ability and somebody without an ability. That's how I feel. And, and same thing with wide receivers. I, I look when I play, I'm like, damn, I wish I had every wide receiver with a chem. It'd be a lot easier. I don't want to go to the guy without a chem because he's probably not going to catch it. Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely need to have an X if you're going to be throwing the ball to anyone. Yeah. What Skimbo said, it's time to talk about what y'all talk on the phone about. It's the prize pool. Like, the, I feel like, so we, we, we had a summit where me, Skimbo, Kid, Drini, and we talked to EA about this last year. And so I don't know how you feel about this, W, but in my opinion, Club Series is giving out way too much money to people who are participants. They're giving, they used to give out $2,000 or like $1,000 for you making the final four of your club. And I feel like a lot of that money should be, you know, put out in half. Like maybe instead of getting a thousand, they get 500. And I feel like that should be, you know, more added more to the top of uh, the prize pools. Like Clef made a finals and a final four. I think he only won 45K. So I do feel like the money needs to be going to the top instead of the bottom. And I don't know what it is with EA. Like they, they really want to be able to give money to people who, who are just participating, and I get it. They want to give everyone a hope. But at the end of the day, you got to think about, like, if what, what's more significant, whether you win 85 k or 50 k or if somebody wins $1,500 to $500. And I feel like it's more life-changing for you to win thousands of dollars than you just, you know, win a few hundred dollars. So I do feel like the, the prize pool, even if it doesn't go up, it just needs to be uh, basically distributed more evenly, especially more towards the top, like, the people who are winning these tournaments should be making a lot more money. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I've been on record to tell you I don't like club series at all. Now, I don't like to do that because I've been shitty in club series. Uh, I, I guess I've played I've played twi- two club series, and I've been shitty. I've lost the mechanics both times. You know, so for me, I don't want to be the person to continually say I don't like club series because it makes me sound bitter. And the last thing I want to do is be the bitter old guy, even though I am sometimes. But uh, I don't want to be that person. But I, I think Club Series as a whole holds back the entire MCS. You know, but so but at the same time, Club Series has a lot of benefits. But I agree. I mean, the money should be higher. I mean, look at this year. This year, how many different sponsorships have they had between this Pizza Hut Stadium, the Snickers, and I'll, it's probably other ones than that. You know, and, and so they're definitely making more money off the MCS now than 
prior years. So maybe we'll turn around this year and we get to get to two million dollars because five million dollars is like the 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 golden ticket. Essentially, is like the the unreasonable amount that would be really good for the MCS. But I think two million after being one point five million or whatever it was this year, one point three four whatever. I think two million is a good number we could try to strive for for Madden 21 and, and I agree I, I just like you said if I'm if I'm Bazooka Joe and this is my first MCS event and I get a check from EA that says $500 I am absolutely stoked I am I'm super happy regardless whether it's 500 or 1500 because I just got $500 from playing Madden so I think the difference in that money is not a, a, as vital as like you said the 85 to 65 yeah I definitely agree like and the thing too is I feel like if we did get a, a bigger prize pool I do feel like a lot of that, you know, the, the bigger prize pool is going to go to the bottom of the, like, the money, like, you know, the guys who are just, you know, making the events instead of it going to the top. And I do feel like we the people who are winning these tournaments or making deep runs should be making more. Like, Drainy actually says something crazy. Like, I'm, you're going you're gonna to hear this and be like, wow, Drainy made more money this year than he made last year. Yeah. Because he, he made, obviously, the, the finals of club. And that's crazy because Drini last year, if you really think about it, like if you if you don't con- include my season and Skimbo season, the third best season is probably Drini last year. He, he made a finals and won one and he made a final eight. Yeah. And then he made more money from this year where he had a final eight and a finals, which is just kind of crazy. Like I, I just think that the club series is the money in club series is just way too unbalanced where if, if you do poorly in clubs, it's kind of tough for you to make a good amount of money in Madden. And I, I don't think it should be like that. I feel like minimum, if you win a if you win a tournament, you should be minimum winning fifty k. For sure, definitely, and that's something. Skimbo, Skimbo won those two classic belts, and <laughs> they were kind of like like you said, twenty five k each. I want to say or twenty five and thirty five. It's like, bro, like I, I listen. I, I I I don't like club series. I don't. I think it's a lot of negatives. Uh, I think the negatives to the MCS outweigh the positives. I think it, 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 that that's just me personal. I think one, it's a hand selected tournament. It's like you just I, I I don't like it. But like I said, I have not done well at all in it, so it makes me sound bitter when I say I don't like it. Uh, but like I said, we talked about Man Seventeen. There was no club series in Man Seventeen. There was, but it was a side note. You know, and it was a more successful season for MCS. I think everybody would agree with that. You know, everybody got paid a lot more in Madden 17, you know, and, and that's and that's the biggest difference is club series, right? Yeah, so, I mean, if you, I mean, if you won Madden, Bo, you won 75K. Yeah, and then Skimbo won 100. So there's 100K and a 75K, and I believe Spot Me was 50K. And then, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I think minimum, like, if you win a tournament, like minimum, minimum should be 50K. Yeah, but let, let's agree with this. Everything is definitely on the uprise, you know. Yeah, as sure. it's definitely this, and and I've said this. This is the biggest Madden has ever been, and it is the smallest it will ever be. In that, it's only going to get better. It's only going to uh, continue to grow, thanks to jobs by all of us. You know, putting in effort and, and continue to to make this a, a great event. You know, and I. I and I think the, the good people continuing to win is a good thing. It's a great thing uh, because it gives you storylines. It gives you people to watch. I think the fact that, you know, casuals are watching Joke try to win his first belt after not winning for five, six years, you know, it's like, okay, like this is a storyline, you know, whereas if you get the randoms there all the time, it's not, it doesn't build up the same story. And I think everything's super positive on, on uptick. And I think $2 million is a, a, a realistic goal for the prize pool next year. I really do. And I, obviously we'd want more, but I, I think 2 million would be realistic. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I definitely think they can get it to 2. I think people, you know, saying 5 million is it's just unrealistic because the views and, you know, everything they're getting just doesn't account to giving us 5 million. You could, people compare Fortnite, but, you know, Fortnite's having 100,000 people watch every well, every week on Twitch. So yeah, well, you can't pound compare pound. it. Madden, stuff like Madden gives away more money percentage wise compared to their viewership than Fortnite does. It does. It simply does. Madden get like I would probably say every esport compared to the views that they get, Madden gives away more money. You know, and it's just never going to be any type of worldwide game. It's never going to beat that. If we have our own demographic and people have to understand that. So you can't even begin to compare it to the other games. You know, it just has to be where it is. And like I said, it's it's on the uptick. It's only getting better. And, uh, you know, we just got to continue to do our part. And I feel like everybody everybody in competitive man has done their part. You know, we've all grinded and really put on very well for uh, the MCS in the last four or five years. 
So it's all up to EA. And at the same time, bro, you, you, I think more people, the more money you put out there, I think the more people watch. You know, if, if Joke is playing for a million dollars rather than 65K, I mean, shoot, I mean, the more people are probably going to tune in, you know? Yeah, that's that's also true. But, I mean, it, the one positive is we, we could all agree it's definitely going up. It's not like, you know, the sea, it's getting worse. Like, maybe the structures have got worse, but every year I feel like we're getting more viewers, we're getting more sponsors. So, we're, obviously, more people are watching. So, we got to just, like, keep hoping that keeps happening and, you know, hopefully it, that the prize pool goes up with it. Now, now, how old are you now? 26? Yeah, if I'm turning 27 in June, I, well, on June 13th. Okay, do you feel like, are you getting worse at Madden? Not worse, like, do you notice any difference from you playing Madden now as opposed to when you were 21? Nah, I, honestly, uh, I, I really still feel like, so Donnie told me this interesting stat, and I forget if it was last year, and Donnie told me I was second in most pre-snap adjustments per play, and first was Dreamy. So I, I don't feel like, you know, like, I, I'm, I mean, maybe as I get older, maybe my fingers might get slower and it's going to be tougher for me to set up defenses. But as of right now, I feel like, honestly, like I'm still in my prime in Madden. I feel like I got a few more years until mm-hmm. maybe I start having, you know, some kids and a family. I do feel like I can dedicate a lot of time to Madden to, you know, continue to try to be as good as I can. And Donnie says that you were the third oldest to ever win a belt. So do you know who the oldest person to ever win a Madden major in the history of Madden is? Yeah, it's that uh, this one guy who flipped up and won a Madden yep, ball somehow. Yep, the oldest player to ever win a Madden major. Going back to the history of Madden, the oldest player ever was me. Now, I'm mad I was 29 and I wasn't 30 because the 30 rule might be real. It might really be real. So once I turn 30. So, wait, who's the second oldest? Is it Skim? I don't know who the, that's Donnie. So Donnie knows all this stuff. Skimbo, right? I no, Skimbo's Skimbo. not that old. He's not that old. He was probably your age when he won. Maybe. Well, maybe not in Mad 19. Oh, 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 third. Oh, okay, I get what you mean. So, who would be second? Stiff, maybe. I don't know. I thought Stiff might have been older than me. I don't know how, how old Stiff is. I yeah, that's actually crazy. Like, I, I didn't even realize I was a third. It's, it's really crazy, too, because when I first started playing Madden, like, I was the young person. Like, I started playing, you know, like, Evo and Bruss. Those dudes were all, like, the old ones. And now, like, now I'm one of the old ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're definitely old, man. When when I watch these these kids play, like or these face cams and shit, I'm like, bro, what? Like between <laughs> Pavin and D Croft and J Wall and Fancy, it's like, dude, what? Who else is yeah, a little? Even good. Noah, it's like, bro, what? But yeah, I don't know I who like the, the second oldest would be. Kids. Yeah, they're they're kids, man. They're kids. But uh, what, the, look, I do want to talk about your your Blue Long Island because we are on the mic now. Who is it? <laughs> Skimbo is the second oldest. Okay. The Blue Long Island. Now, this is my opinion on the Blue Long Island. Now, first of all, when Joke ordered the Blue Long Island, you were probably, what, 23 or 22? It was it was probably three years ago, right? Okay. Yeah. My opinion on the Blue Long Island is, one, it definitely has a lot of liquor in it, right? Also a lot of sugar. It's just not a drink that a man goes to the bar and orders. That's all. I feel like it's more of a feminine drink. I feel like it's more, maybe if you're 22 or 21, like, what maybe... It's possible you get a Blue Long Island. I just feel as if it's not a man's drink that he goes to the bar and order. That's all me and Jet were making fun of you about. And, you know, to this day, I feel like you still would order a Blue Long Island. Nah, if, if I go to a bar now, I'm definitely getting uh, Patron or Red Bull. Okay, Patron or Red Bull. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm over the the Blue Long Islands. But I, we, we, might need a, we, might need, we might need a vote. A vote There's, in the chat? Hey, look, bro. I, hey, Dub, if you drink... If you chug three Blue Long Islands, you are done for the night. Oh, yeah. First of all, Long Island is every it, liquor. It can't, it can't be a girl's drink if it's getting you messed up. It's just, it's just, yeah, but it's just, I don't know, it's just not the order. The order. I mean, I'm not, I did not, I never said it was a weak drink. That was never the word. I just said it was a little, it was a little childish. That's all, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't drank one in a while, but I feel like, you know, we might need a vote on that. Then you also took a shot the other day, right? You went with the lime and a chaser. Do you understand Wait. that the lime is the chaser? Okay, okay. First of all, we, I got to break this down. So I don't know how about you guys, but personally me, when I get really drunk off a drink, my body, I, the next few shots I take, you know, I, I got to, you know, ease it in. So maybe like three weeks before, I, you know, during quarantine, I drank a whole bottle of tequila and I was hungover for two days. 
I'm not kidding. Hung over for two days. So, you know, once your body tastes tequila again, you start getting in flashbacks. Yes, so that's I had to go with the double chaser. I, I'm not mad. As long as, you, as long as you acknowledge the double chase. That's all. Some, some people try to say the lime is not a chaser. The oh, lime no, is definitely a chaser. Yeah, for sure. You know, but yeah, normally it's like if I'm hungover, it's the smell. That's the you know, I smell is like oh and that's the man. Same thing. Yeah, like I, it's like your stomach telling you like nah, bro, don't do it again. Good ain't for you, but once you take that one shot after, you're right back. Yeah, I took you know two in the that's all. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. So what's what's next for Doke? Like, what's the summer going to look like? Uh, what is do I mean? Do you have any other goals? Not only this year, but you know, in your future in Madden. Like, what what do you see in the next year and the next five years? So I, I'm going to start streaming a little bit. I got like a, like EA basically granted us some cards to practice with. So I, I got a pretty insane mutt team. So I, I can't stream right now because uh, until basically I get to take down all the equipment they sent us. I have to do an interview with ESPN. So until I do that, I can't take down all this equipment. Once I'm able to like take all this thing out, I can basically connect my Elgato again. So mm-hmm. now like basically all my, you know, all my feeds are connected to this big box they sent us and I can't obviously, you know, take that out yet. So as soon as I'm able to stream, I'm probably going to stream some weekend league, maybe stream some uh, occasionally because I, I was having, you know, some fun when I was streaming before. So probably mm-hmm. stream a little more and then, you know, just still focused on the website. Got to make sure that we, you know, we get back to where we were to start the year and then, you know, just get ready for another year of Madden. Just keep preparing like I did this year and, you know, put in the time and hopefully it pays off again. For sure. Now, you play weekend league and you put Tressway out there. What's your record? Oh, I'm going 25 and 0 without. There's a no way. There's no way. There's no way. 50 weekend. gifted. 50 gifted. You don't go 25 and 0 without a quarterback. Okay, locked. Locked. There's no way. Tressway. There's no way. It's not happening. Now, now you will wind up 15 and 0, but then I'm telling you, somebody's going to get you. No, I'm, I'm going 25 and 0 without a quarterback. Jesus. Hey, Tecmo, I did quit last time, but now I got every golden ticket in the game. I got a million power-up passes for every power-up pass, and I have every 99 overall you can possibly have. My my mutt team right now is probably a 99 overall. Jesus. But I'm telling you, so, and you're going to put Tressway out there. Tressway and Eli. I, I, Tressway and Eli, I'll have two nasty streaks. I'm, I'm telling I'll you, have... yo, these, these kids are demons. They really are. It's not it's not a joke out here on Weekend League, bro. All right, we're, it's 50 gifted is locked. Yeah, as soon as I'm able, as soon as I'm able to stream, once I got all this equipment out of my room, <laughs> I'm booing up. All right, I'm telling you, should I, listen. Now, 25 with trust away. That's 50 gifted. I'm definitely dropping 50 gifted if he does that. Uh, but uh, like I said, I appreciate. It. I, one thing before I go, uh, I do want to talk about the spot me thing because you know it means a lot to me, and obviously it means a lot to you. I think that was that was super special that you uh, you know kept coming up short. And then you put the Titans jerseys on and go ahead and win. Uh, talk about that and, and what it meant to you and, and you being able to do that with the Titans jerseys on. Yeah, it was actually kind of crazy because uh, I, I didn't even realize, honestly, I'd be able to choose whatever jerseys I wanted. And then Chow hit me up and was like, hey, what jerseys are you using? And at that point, I was already using the Titans jerseys. So that's kind of when I realized, like, you know, this is the last tournament. Let me just try to dedicate this one to spot. Mm-hmm. And like me and Spot used to talk about this a lot because I remember the first tournament he won, he he actually beat me, and that's the tournament where he kind of told me like you know if you win, I'm, I'm gonna beat Skimbo so we can like after the the classic when he won, that's when I actually started becoming close to Spot. And then the next season he basically used the team I made for him because at that point we were both running the same offense where we were running you know bunch tight end, and mm-hmm. we were running the the two tight end sets. So that's kind of when I started getting really close to Spot. And, you know, I just felt like there's there was no better way to end the season. And, like, you know, what if I can win a tournament where I dedicate the spot? Mm-hmm. And I, I do feel like uh, – I should have said this in my interview. I do feel like EA tries to throw what happened under the rug. And they don't really mention Eli. And, you know, they don't mention Spot. They don't mention True Boy. And it, it's I feel like it's, some, it's, it's bad on their part because I get, you know, they're in lawsuits. And I still feel like they should try to keep their memory alive. And not I, I've watched every single game I played not one time – that any of the commentators ever mentioned why I was using the jerseys and why my team name was RIP. So to me, it was just kind of a way to keep his memory alive because EA does a really poor job of doing that. Well, and, and, and you know, uh, and that's why I, I've always felt like it's my responsibility. You know, I take that as part of our responsibility. You know, you can't rely on them to do that. Uh, and, and you did a great job with that. And, and going to that, I feel like in the last, because I remember back in Man 16, 
when I used to whoop your ass on on the leaderboards. Confirmed, right? <laughs> yes. Whoop. I used to drag Joe. Joe did not like three deep. He's gonna blame it on on the the the, the, no, the no. mutt team. Hey, look, Dub. I'm not kidding. You made E and B buy twenty million dollars worth no, of coins. So, mm -hmm. no, now look. No, no, he did not like three deep. I used to drag right. Joe. And what did and Joe used to come in the chat? That be sucks. Bye bye bye. You're so fucking bad. Uh, play me for a thousand right now on regs. But right, that was Joe. That was the old Joe. And I, I I do feel like you've become a, a a better man and a more mature human being in the last since I've known you and, and been close with you in the last four or five years. And uh, I definitely think this was the pinnacle of that. Very happy for you and proud of uh, you becoming a, a little bit less of a dick. Now, you're not all the way out of, you know, being a dick area. You're still there, you know what I'm saying? But you definitely have become a, a better human being. And, and that's one thing I love about Madden. I see it happen to so many other people. It's just Madden has, you know, really made them become better people, whether it be becoming more social, becoming, you know, just better human beings in general. And I think you're a prime example of that. And like I said, I'm, I'm very happy for you. And congratulations again. Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like in a lot of situations where I see myself, you know, being a dick and not being a good person, I just go, I'm like, you know, what would Spot Me do? And I feel like Spot Me was the nicest person we had in the community. Yeah. So honestly, that 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 just shows me a lot. You got to just try to be a better person. Like, because, you know, like nobody can ever say anything bad about Spot or True Boy. And, you know, like, I, that's kind of how I want people to view me. So, like, you know, whenever I feel like, you know, I'm not being a good person, I kind of just like reflect back and be like, you know, Spot wouldn't have done that. So. That, that's another reason too why I try to dedicate this tournament to him because again, like EA just doesn't keep his memory alive. EA doesn't show how good of a person he was. Yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, like I said, that's that's probably always going to be the darkest part of the, for EA. So it's going to be tough for them to continually bring that up. So that's our job, and that's one of my. That's why when I go, I wear a t-shirt every single day that I go out. <laughs> I go outside the house. You know, it's it's really my responsibility and one of my burdens. For honestly, the rest of my life, and I think we we've all done a very good job of that uh, between both True Boy and Spot Me, and uh, I'm I'm glad you were able to win that way. Just made it a little bit more like like you said, destiny. I mean, I think that that was a uh, what it all came down to. Yeah, it definitely feels like everything just came full circle. There you go. But I appreciate you coming on here. I will be going to EliteMan.com to go find some of the defenses that were ran because I need to learn how to run match. So if you guys want to learn how to run match, I, I Joe tried to explain it, but it didn't work, and I'm going to go on Mutt and get absolutely, people are going to be wide open. So I'm going to go to LeapMan.com and figure out how to do that. But once again, I really appreciate you hopping on, man, and congratulations once again. Appreciate it, Dub. Thanks. All right, my guy. There it is, man. Joke. Ride Del Brito, the Madden 20 champion, the best player in Madden 20. Uh, really, I said pretty much broke it down as well as possible. Uh, really explained a lot of things. Still don't know how match works. So YouTube, if you guys know how match works, please break it down. I really feel like there. I, I don't know what to. I don't know how it works, but uh, it worked really good with Joke. Worked uh, very well with him, and he was able to win a belt using that match concept against Bunch, and uh, beating beating D Croft. And we talked about his defense versus that, and really holding it down for the man community when his first belt. Uh, but all in all, I, I and I ask you guys, I will tell you this right now. Um, what do we think about Man Twenty? This was the belt. This was the last tournament. This was a a you know obviously the the year is over. The MCS year is over. What is our total view of the year? I mean, I kind of like the game. I do. But when you look back at the four belt winners and nobody do a pass of of relevant pass, you know, I mean that's kind of a Black cloud over the year of Madden 20, a really black cloud, you know. Uh, so I don't, I'm not the one to say it's the uh, the worst Madden ever. I, I don't think that's, I think that's really a rush to judgment, and I think it's a, a we kind of forget the past. Uh, game was fun, but ass. I kind of agree with that. I, I, I don't know. I just, and will it? taint the whole year is when we look back at this year because this is how madden works chat you guys you guys agree with me on this is that um when you look back at the year say okay 08 was spec catch year 09 was rocket curls okay 10 was uh, one of them was slant outs right i don't really remember all the way uh i think 12 was uh throw streaks inside pass leaf streaks inside or outside um sugar blitz and you think about two man 16 was just spec catching throwing the ball up and, uh, you know, a spectacular catch, pretty much aggressive catch. 
17 might have been Swerve or Nickel Blitz, and then 18, 91 zone, 19. What, what would 19 come down to, really? I don't really know what 19 would be called. And Madden 20 is going to be the no quarterback. That's, uh, you know, maybe Madden 19 was just high ball, low ball, really. You know, or different route comes and everything. You know. But that's why we look back at it. I think, honestly, the MCS year, I, all in all, I think it's got to be a W. You know, I, I, the MCS, the tournaments, the way they were thrown, the way they're executed, the production, uh, everything about the tournaments, I think, have to be a W. Right, chat? There has to be a W. Whether from the, even the prize pool being low. Yeah, so I, I feel like it was a fun man. I, but like I said, the MCS year... I feel like it has to be a W from what MC, what EA threw, uh, the production, the, the way they executed every single tournament has to be a W, you know? I really do. You know? I, I think it was, we talk about the game, if the game is going to continue to be a 40-second play clock and five minutes, I, I really think running is really going to still have a, it would have to be really, really bad and let's be real. Has the run been really, really bad in the MCS era? You know, let's think about has the run. I would say 17, the run wasn't that good. I'm trying to think about everybody that won that year passed the ball. You know, I don't think there was one, like, runner. You know what I'm saying? I don't think 17 ever had a run. But problem, 17 problem didn't even really run. Maybe inside zone. Inside zone only. But that was dollar blew up inside zone. I, I I would tell you problem. I don't even think he was a runner, man. I mean, he went down there and ran, but I don't think he was a runner. Nineteen, see, a nineteen. I kind of didn't play really. I kind of wasn't locked in at all, really. After Jacksonville and everything, nineteen. I really don't even really remember too much, really. Money always going to need to be more, and 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 to think, uh, let's about money needs to be more, and let's about we. I feel like money's kind of been too similar to the first year. Seventeen was like one point something million. With two, I think, I think two million is a good number for us to shoot at. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I think that's the biggest, the biggest uh, thing we can look at is next year. Hopefully, two million is a good number. Yeah, eighteen, eighteen air trusts really was a runner year really. Yeah, I, I think, Jack, when you're the best at something, I think you do deserve some more money. You know, Josh, I think that's, yeah. You know? Good job, Noah. See, you're learning. I see, Noah, that's how I know you'd be watching. You're already spending money, but you don't keep... Look, you could be skimbo or you could be me. You could be broke or you could be skimbo just sitting chilling. You know, which one is better when you really think about it? Noah, Noah learns, really. But, yeah, I really do think... Uh, Two million prize pool would be really good, honestly. I do think uh, two million is a good number to get at. In the format, I mean, if Club Series is going to be a thing, which it will be, you know, I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, I think uh, the format's going to be similar. Yeah. No, let's be real, and this is what's crazy. It's not like we're going to stop playing the game because the prize pool is $1.4 million, you know. They could honestly probably make the prize pool 800 k and we'd probably still lock in the same way, you know. Yeah, as I see, I'll go out there, you know. I did order some, some stuff for the room today. Uh, I made a compromise with my girl. She said we need some Ohio State stuff, right? It was a tough compromise, chat. She said, you need some Ohio State stuff for the office. Right? Now, for me, the only way I could do that, I grabbed the Malcolm Jenkins autographed helmet. I grabbed the Ohio State helmet. Felt like that's a W. Malcolm Jenkins is probably one of my top 10 players ever that, that I'm a fan of. Malcolm Jenkins' helmet is pretty dope. So. so that's what I went with. You know, I, I I had to add something. I had to add something to the uh, to the archives here from Ohio State, really. But like I said I, I do feel the year the year was good. I I enjoyed the MCS. I enjoyed watching every game. You know, maybe one day I'll be a part of a game again. We'll see. You know, gotta spend more time. I got need to add some runners, bro. I need to add some runners. 
Uh, did you hear Joke name all the people he know that run? Like, how are you going to stop an army of runners? Right, Chad? How is that? Like, what? Yeah, we get Noah. Noah. Noah squad. Come on, man. Sign up, Noah. We need at least we need another runner. They got Jay. I don't know how they got Jay Bird. I don't know how that happened. I thought Jay Bird was squad. He's gone. You know? But who else, man? It can't just be Noah. We need five. We need five different people, bro. We need five different people, bro. Five different runners. I got to find, you know who I got to find, really? I got to find one of these weekend league kids that's a demon running the ball. You know, that's what I need to find. One of them dudes. Ethan, bro, Ethan. They got carried, too. They got, bro, they got all runners. I hope it's next year is a passing year because they don't have Ghost no more. Ghost was their passing, was their passing offensive coordinator, Right? Bro, I'm going to be real. Yes, we need tweets. Fact. Bro, facts. Bro, listen. Tweets. We need tweets. But for real, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. If passing comes back, yo, I'm telling you. EMB might be. And I don't know who the passing coordinator is. Watch. I'm telling you that's it. Listen, Mike. I'm telling you. Watch. This is how jo your joke is slant. Watch. Watch passing be good again. Somehow he back with ghosts. Watch. Watch. Watch it happen. They're going to be tweeting each other like, ha, ha, ha. Well, I'm telling you something. Joke not stupid, bro. Joke is smart. They don't have a passing game coordinator. I don't even know who would be the next person to coordinate the passing game at EMB. Who would it be? I don't know who it would be. It would probably be Joke. Little man, though. Beast mode. Nah, man, I, I don't know, bro. Drag, man, drag's pretty good, but drag always ran something. Listen, drag only only ran run something a little unique. I don't think EMB could incorporate the drag offense though. That's gonna be rough, bro. Nah, I don't. Right, listen, we'll see. But. I'm I'm just telling you. I think Ghost finds his way back into the back into the, that corner. Honestly, really. But like I said, this was we are up over two hours now, or closing on the two hour mark. I said every single belt winner has hopped on the show. I appreciate all you guys for your support. We're gonna get TD Barrett. That might be somebody we gotta grab. I got the YouTubers, Faffy. I, my YouTubers are Scomo and CC. Those are my YouTubers and Toke. That's my that's my gang. You know what I'm saying I don't need no other. I don't need any other YouTubers in that. I'm that. that I, I've had enough of hanging out with those YouTubers, really. Yeah. But that's, like I said, no. Seriously, about Joke, he's definitely become like a better dude. Honestly, he really has. Um, and it's cool to see. Like I said, I used to drag him up and down the field in Madden 16. Drag Joke up and down the field. And he was mean. You know what I'm saying? He was a mean asshole. But now he's he's definitely turned to a, a better person. It's good to see. Makes it because listen, Madden 17, 18. I, mean, I would never be happy for Joke. Like no, Joke got to use lose every game. Swear to God, that's how it used to be. But uh, now, like I said, Madden has definitely helped his. The whole community has helped him become just a better person. And it's glad to see, really. I got to get Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, if he can block on blast, baby. But anyway, this was the Needed Podcast, episode 81. This is 81 straight weeks of grinding out podcast. It's the summertime now, though, boys. What are we going to talk about in the summertime on the podcast? Comment below on YouTube because I, we're going to need some ideas. We're going to look back at classic games. Last year was All Madden 17. I might go All Madden 18 classic games this summer. All Madden 18. Favorite games, Matt 18. Comment those below. If you're still here listening, you know the deal. Drop your Cash App or your PayPal. You supporting this this so much. I support you guys. Don't do it in the chat because you chat guys are you guys are definitely really uh, thirsty. You know, but uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Matt, the summertime is going to be fun. Definitely going to keep adding to our our list, our podcast list of you know everything we want new in Madden 21. And going to keep grinding out all the old games and things of that nature, really. Best Madden runs bracket. 
Oh, we always have time. Yeah, exactly, Willie. Somebody wants to start beefing or something. We're going to have some argument, really. Oh, Joker knows. McNasty knows all the good Madden 18 games. An award show. Donnie, when should we have an award show? Now, I'll be real. I How would we do that? I think I would pick the awards. How would an award show work? And I need to get trophies for these guys. I'm going to get... This is what we're going to do. We're going to do an award show. That's a good idea. I'm literally going to buy trophies, all right? And we're going to mail trophies to these guys, all right? Award show, listen. We're going to throw the suit on for the award show. I will pick rookie of the year, right? Player of the year. Give me two weeks. I'm I, I got to look into this. Let me look into this. Because I'm going to get trophies, and I'm going to mail people trophies. Because we got... Listen, we're either doing it for real or we're not doing it. Right, chat? You got full send. Put the full sends in the chat. We're full sending the award show. All right? This is MCS Awards. This show is completely about competitive Madden. All right? We're not doing the best YouTuber. We're not doing the best highlights. We're not, We're doing... This is... This is... We need our topics. We don't need four or five. We need we need solid. How about game of the year, right? Game of the year, so two people will get a trophy. Or does just the winner for game of the year get a trophy? I would say just the winner, right? You can't give the loser a trophy. Ten top. I need to buy ten trophies. All right, that's a little nuts. I think you need rookie of the year, the MVP, most improved. How about a most improved award? Most improved game of the year. And what's the other one? Sexy. CR, y'all took a word. No, we're not doing best room. I mean, I'm not giving out trophies for best, worst room, best fit. <laughs> no. Play of the year. Well, play of the year got a, a million Snickers. Offensive and defensive player of the year. We'll decide the awards. Yes, next podcast, I'll decide the awards. I will go ahead and and come up. I don't want 10. I don't want lifetime achievement. Weekend League Demon of the Year. That would probably be fancy, all right? (laughs) Best fighter. Ponino Jumbo wins nothing here. Pass of the year? It's tough to find one pass of the year. I'd have to go back and we'd have to really talk about who would win these awards. But next week, I will figure out the exact awards and we'll talk about them. So next week, we'll figure out five or six awards, right? And we'll talk about who we think could be in there. Then we can go through and we can come up with nominees, right? And then and then I will choose who to who. That's it. I don't care. I'm choosing who's number one. So if Clef wins three awards, y'all just going to have to deal with it. If Skimbo wins the award for best play when he had no good plays all year, y'all just going to deal with it. If Boogs wins the award for best team construction, you guys are just going to have to deal with it, okay? That's all. That's why they watch. You know? That's all. A twi- but Twitter polls are dumb because it's just about, oh, I know who Journey is. Let me vote for Journey. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Chat just gonna choose, you know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be tough to be chat picks, or really. chat picks or Twitter picks is always kind of weak. Chat polls could work, but we're gonna talk about that next week. I will be next week we'll talk all about award show, the awards, and then we'll do we'll go ahead with the um with adding to the we could probably add two things next week to the wish list. I will, I, listen, we will email this wish list to Mark Koo. We will e- email this wish list to Donnie. We'll email this wish list to, you know, whoever the hell it works on. Everybody I know EA is getting our wish list by the end of the year. You know? Yeah, I, I, we'll see. We'll, listen, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're going to fax it. Or we're going to project it, everything. You know what I'm saying? 
yeah, I don't want to be biased. You know, I feel like I can make good decisions on what the player of the year was. Ryan Hollins, best defense of the year. All right. All right, we're done. We're done. Yeah, we're going to put it in the, the GMM chat. This was the Needle Podcast, episode 81. Like I said, hit the like button. Put, you know, what what awards should we have? What was the game of the year? What, what do you think of Matt? Whatever the hell y'all want to put in the comment section, put something in the com- comments.